I'm going to demonstrate how to use the multi-transform tool, which is part of FreeCAD's part design workbench. The multi-transform tool allows us to apply several mirror, linear pattern, or polar pattern transformations to a feature in FreeCAD. The tool also allows us to apply a scaling transform, but that will be the subject of another video. Before we get started, if you like the information I'm presenting, please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee through the link in the description below. All donations will be used to improve the information presented on this channel. Now let's look at some concrete examples. In this simple example, I'm going to model the mounting holes for the casters to make a simple trolley. The casters that I'm using in this model were downloaded from the McMaster car website and they're being used for illustrative purposes only. Turning off the casters shows the pattern of holes that need to be included in the model. Each caster requires four holes for the mounting bolts and there are four casters on the trolley. Let's start modeling. I have already created the base of the trolley. So the first thing I need to do is create the sketch for one mounting hole. Normally I would base a sketch on a datum plane, but I'm going to do it differently today. Create the sketch on the XY plane and switch back to the model view to change the attachment position of the sketch's origin. The thickness of the base is 19 millimeters, so I set Z to 19. I want the origin of the sketch to be 100 millimeters left of the global origin, so I set X to minus 100. And I want it to be 210 millimeters above, so I set Y to 210. This moves the sketch towards the top left corner of the base. Now I will switch back to the task pane and continue modeling one mounting hole. The mounting hole is an eight millimeter hole that is 22 millimeters left of the sketch's origin and 37 millimeters above it. I've made the hole eight millimeters in diameter to make it easier to see in this example, but in practice, it is probably too big for the caster. Close the sketch and use the pocket tool to create a hole through the base. Now the multi-transform tool is used to create the remaining holes. Select the hole, then start the multi-transform tool. The multi-transform tool is divided into two main sections. The first contains messages about the transformation. The second contains the parameters for the transformation. We're mostly interested in the second section. The multi-transform parameters allows you to add or remove features using the two buttons and allows you to add more transformations. Right clicking in the transformations box allows you to add, modify and remove transformations as well as rearrange their order. I'll start by adding a mirrored transformation and the plane is defaulting to the vertical sketch axis. You can see that the hole is being mirrored to the right of the sketch's origin, which is what I want. So I click the OK button. Now I'll add a second mirrored transformation by right clicking on the transformation box. But this time I want both holes to be mirrored below the sketch's origin. So I change the plane to the horizontal sketch axis. This creates the remaining holes for the caster. So I click the OK button. Creating the remaining mounting holes is a matter of repeating the two mirrored transformation steps. Add a third mirrored transformation, but there is no visible change in the model. Why is that? The additional holes are there, but they are sitting over the existing ones so we can't see them. The reason is that the mirror is being created around the sketch's vertical axis. Which plane should it be mirrored around? The holes need to be mirrored around the model's YZ plane. Changing the plane will mirror the holes correctly. Finally, the remaining holes are created by mirroring everything around the model's XZ plane. You might be wondering why I moved the origin of the sketch before creating the first hole. By default, all sketches have the same origin, so the placement of the features would be based around the origin of the model. We would have had to model all four holes in the sketch before using the multi-transform tool to create the mirrors. In that case, we would only need to add the last two transformations. There are often multiple ways of modeling things in FreeCAD, so you can decide which way works best for you. I chose to model one hole and then use four mirror transformations to show you how you can apply multiple transformations to a simple sketch to get the result you desire. In this example, I'm going to continue with the trolley design concept by mounting casters around the edge of a circular trolley that could be used for moving potted plants. Again, the casters were downloaded from the McMaster car website and are used for illustrative purposes only. 
In this example, I'll use a polar pattern to make five copies of one set of mounting holes. I have created the circular base of the trolley and the first set of mounting holes using the steps outlined earlier in this video. Double clicking on the multi-transform feature allows me to add the polar pattern. Right click on the transformation pane and select add polar pattern. You'll note that nothing has changed. So which plane can I use? The model's Z axis is the one to use and it is shown as passing vertically through the origin of the model. Select the base Z axis and set the number of occurrences to complete the model. The next example we're going to look at is a simple pegboard made from several linear patterns. The pegboard is a pretty simple model comprised of a single hole and two linear patterns. I have already created the base and the first hole. Since we're not going to be mirroring or creating a polar pattern of the hole, the origin of the hole sketch can be the model's origin or you can move it if you wish. The location of the origin doesn't appear to have any bearing on the linear patterns used in this model. The pegboard is 300 millimeters by 600 millimeters and I want the holes to be on 25 millimeter centers. Click on the multi-transformation tool and add a linear pattern transformation in the transformations pane. The direction of the first row of holes doesn't really matter for this demonstration, so I'll use the horizontal sketch axis. The length of the pattern is 250 millimeters, which is 300 millimeters Y minus the two 25 millimeter centers and the number of occurrences is 10. Click the OK button to add the linear pattern. Add a second linear pattern transformation and set the direction to be the vertical sketch axis. The length is 550 millimeters and the number of occurrences is 22. Reverse the direction of the pattern to make the rows of the holes visible. Click OK to add the linear pattern. I'm sure that you notice a slight delay when adding all the holes. The multi-transformation tool can be computationally intensive, but we'll come back to that. I chose a simple model to demonstrate the principles of the tool without having to worry about performance issues. So far, we've looked at models that do not require a lot of computational power so that we can understand the principles of the multi-transform tool. Now let's explore a model that is computationally intensive. I have made a parametric version of the pegboard example to demonstrate this. This model contains a number of formulas that drive the length and number of occurrences in each of the linear pattern transformations. Changing the value of the width, height, or hole centers will recompute the entire model. The SF total holes cell contains the number of holes that were generated by the two transformations. I'm running FreeCAD on an AMD Ryzen 2700X processor, which is not the latest technology, but it does a pretty good job of processing the models that I use. The pegboard is currently 300 millimeters wide and 600 millimeters high and has a hole drilled every 25 millimeters. There are 220 holes in the board. Let's double the width and see what happens. It takes a few seconds to recompute the 484 holes in the board. Let's double the height of the board. It takes a lot longer to recompute the 1,012 holes. Let's double the width again. You can see that it's taking even longer to recompute the holes. FreeCAD is recomputing each hole in each row whenever a change is made and that just adds up to more time. I think that you'll find that the value derived in modeling an object like this pegboard will vary depending upon your design and the computer specifications. You might find it impractical to continue with such a design. Personally, I wouldn't design a pegboard using FreeCAD because I don't see any value in doing so. If I was modeling a design that needed a pegboard, I would simply include a flat panel and state in the design notes that it was a pegboard. But your scenario might be different, so you'll make another judgment call. It's worth remembering that the processing time is directly related to the number of transformations that you're performing multiplied by the number of occurrences of the feature in that transformation. I hope you found that interesting. The multi-transform tool is quite powerful, but it comes with some performance penalties depending on the tasks you throw at it. Please click the like button if you like this sort of video. 
If you'd like to support my work financially, you can buy me a cup of coffee through the link in the description below. All donations will be used to improve the content on this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.